from Hollywood. It's the Tom Likas Show. Listen, fellas, I won one money. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. Time for Like Is 101, the ongoing on our adult education course. We teach us men how to get more tail for less money. Just as importantly, we teach women how men think at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. Joe, you're on Like Is 101 with your professor. Hello. Father. Joe. Hey. How you doing, man? Doing okay. All right. Well... Hey, man, um, I'd really been listening to you for a while, and uh, I listen to a lot of your advice and stuff on, you know, as far as women and relationships, and I tried to, like, spread your gospel to, you know, most of my buddies who need it. But um, <clears throat> recently, I kind of really let you down, man. I'm really sorry for that. Oh, because, boy. Yeah. I kind of met this girl and uh, clicked a lot of with her on a lot of things, and I kind of just fell, you know, a little a little too hard probably for this one and i just kind of it's like i that voice of you in my head just kind of disappeared little by little because she kind of sapped it from me but um the thing is as as deeper as more deep i got into it with her um you know little fights for little you know pathetic things just kind of came back and forth and that's when i would try to be like okay it's tom time and try to put my foot down on things, but this woman is kind of got a very dominant kind of personality. Well, first of all, you can't put your foot down once you've been a pussy. Uh, you set the bar low. Well, not really. I mean, I well, I didn't feel like I was because I was just kind of we we're just kind of doing mutual things. Like, well, how would she ever feel like she could get her way if she'd never gotten it before? Well, probably with uh, maybe the guys of her past, then I well, guess. Well, couldn't just... you just say no? Um. Well, yeah, and I did, but at the same time, I actually I wanted to uh, stay with her at the same time. But whenever I would put my so foot down, you wanted you wanted to be with a controlling bitch. Um. Well, at first she was really you know sweet and you know always... every controlling bitch is sweet in the beginning. Oh man. <laughs> Well, yeah, that's probably uh, that's probably where she trapped me. It was kind of like a bait and switch kind of thing. Well, you have to start by saying no anytime someone is unreasonable. No, the answer is no. Yeah. What and kinds of things does she demand? Well, it's more like um, when I make demands and she's not okay with it. It's uh, well, let's say um, she's very busy with uh, school and work and stuff like that, and you know she makes time. When she can for us to go out and stuff like that, and um, why do you care about going out? Uh, well, <laughs> not real, well because you know where it leads to in the end. But I mean, either way, uh, well, I just uh, go to, uh, spend the night in where it's going to end up well, anyway. We, well, we do that too. We, uh, we, why do you need to go out? Oh, we don't. We don't need to. I mean, you. Go, oh no, me? No, I don't. You need said to. when I demand to go out. Oh no, I don't. Well, not. Typically, not really go out per se, but more like just spend time. Just, you know, any time, whether it's out, whether Do you see in. why this is a good idea not to uh, have a girlfriend? If she was not your girlfriend, you wouldn't care. You would see her when she had time. And when she didn't have time, you'd see somebody else. Yeah, and, that, and that's the thing. That's um, kind of the problem where I fell in is because I started telling her that, you know, I wasn't going to see anybody else. Why'd you do her. that? Well, because I thought that maybe um, she'd do a mutual thing. Who and, cares what she does? Uh, well, I mean, I liked what I was getting, so I just... But um, who cares if if on the nights when she's too busy to be with you, she's with someone else? So what? Uh, Are you a little boy? Who cares what she's doing? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, well, I guess kind of compared the to The price her, is too high. Let her do whatever she wants with other people. Who cares? Right. Because that's what you'll be doing, whatever you want. Well, um, what I was going to say is, well, I did kind of, you know, put my foot down hard on some things, and she ended up today, well, she wanted to split. Great. And just call off the relationship. Good. So, um. Very nice. I was thinking. <laughs> so, yeah, but I was thinking, like, um, since she did say I was, like, the best, 
you know, one she was ever with, and she says she still wants to be friends and, and hang out and stuff like that, does that pretty much mean I'm done, or does she mean what you say about... Well, being... it depends on if you see her naked after she <laughs> says she's had enough. <laughs> You'll oh. know. By the way, stop worrying about it. Start dating other chicks. You're right. I mean, if she if she's available, fantastic. And if she's not, you've got other chicks. Mm. All right. Thanks a lot, Dad. I'm here to help, son. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Good riddance to bad rubbish. If she wants to come back for a night of rodeo sex, that's fine. 1-800-5800-866. It's another edition of Like Us 101. It's Dave. Hello. Tom. Dave. Tom, you got it all wrong. How so? Hey, Tom, you know what? The real way to get these ladies is to get, to get laid is you got to be nice to them, Tom. You got it all wrong. <laughs> Come on, stop it. You're not serious. I'm dead serious. No, you're not. Come on. That, that's the way to go. Son, you know, let, me, let me tell you okay. something. You know, you're like, you ever see Keenan Thompson on Saturday Night Live? Here's an actor who can't help laughing because he already knows the upcoming joke, and he's always looking at himself on the monitor and laughing at what's coming up. That's you. You're doing that exact thing. You're making a prank phone call. Son, I invented the prank phone call. Let me tell you something. You're, you're not good at it. No, I'm being serious, Tom. No, it's you're not. No. You're not. You're, yeah. not. you're not being serious. I'm, I'm trying to tell you, you know what? The way to really get these ladies laid is you got to be nice to them. You know, that's how you get them in. You no. know, they, no, you it isn't. Go wrong, Tom. No, it isn't. The way you get them in is by treating them like crap. That, that's, that's wrong. <laughs> Son, have a nice day. Hope you enjoy yourself. It's another edition of Like Us 101. Can you attend my class? It is for your own good. I mean, a girl decides how far she's going to let you go in the first five minutes. You in my class? Oh, yeah, I am today. All right, I got an idea. But it's got to stay between us. It's really simple. We just got to make an agreement. Here's the deal. We all get laid before we graduate. It's not like I haven't been trying to get laid. Think about when you work out, Oz. You got to have someone there, right? Someone to spot you. Someone to keep you motivated. Well, that's exactly what we can do for each other. I mean, we'll, we'll be there to keep each other on track. Separately, we are flawed and vulnerable, but together we are the masters of our sexual destiny. I mean, this is our very manhood at stake. We must make a stand here and now. No longer will our penises remain flaccid and unused. We will fight for every man out there who isn't getting laid and should be. This is our day. This is our time. And by God, we will not stand by and watch history condemn us into celibacy. Amen. I like that. Yes, we will make a stand. We will succeed. About time. We will get laid. Yes. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom. 1-800-5800-866. It's Likas 101 on the Tom Likas Show. It's Likas 101. I am your professor. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. My job as your professor is to save you time, money, and energy you waste on Trying to get laid by people who are not going to give you what you want. All you do is call me at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. It's Matthew on the Tom Likas Show with your professor. Hello. Professor. Yes. First time, long time. Thank yes. you. Sure. Uh, your advice has always gotten me laid, fail safe in the past. I love it. I was wondering what your policy is on um, uh, screwing around with coworkers. I'm opposed unless uh, you don't mind losing your job. Gotcha. Well, because you could lose place. your job. Right. Not to mention the fact that if you date someone and then break up, you have to see them at your job all the time. This is your job we're talking about. Right. And can't you find other places to pick up chicks? Yes, I guess you are absolutely right. I just got this uh, 
started a new job up in Seattle, and I got three different broads hitting on me. I believe in not ever talking to women at the office. That sounds pretty, pretty, um, like some sound safe advice to me. That is how you avoid lawsuits, allegations, the HR department. Don't talk to chicks. <laughs> All right, thanks, Tom. Appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. We now take shorter calls. We take them faster. And that means a better chance for you to get through it. 1-800-5800-866. Diego, on the Tom Like is show with your professor. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? I'm doing okay. That's good. Hey, first of all, I just want to thank you all for all your really cool advice. You're welcome. Um, yeah, thanks. So my question is, uh, it concerns all of us under 21, all of us uh, one-on-one students. So I'm in college, and I'm, you know, meeting a bunch of girls, and I just want to know a place where I could take a girl out on a date that isn't like dinner and movies, you know what I mean? Like not a, no, not a place that would give the wrong impression. Well, first of all, uh, why would you even want to go out on a date? Uh, that's a good point. Well, what do you mean? Well, I mean, look, don't you want to go someplace where uh, you're going to go to the shortest distance between two points? Exactly, and that's what I'm trying to get at, you know? I can't really think of anything. You can't think of anything? Why not? Uh, I, I don't know, because, you know, when you think of, of date, you know, I just think picking her up and going out and this whole long process. That I'm trying to avoid. Yeah, well, uh, you know, <laughs> one way to do that is to just get together in the evening somewhere. Uh, I don't know what your attitudes are about uh, doing uh, the things that uh, would include, uh, for example, you might date a chick who's over 21 so she can drink. Right, yeah. Would be one way to do it. And then make sure you don't have to drink, get drinks into her. Oh, yeah, of course. But, I mean, what about uh, the chicks who are my age, you know? But, and the point is, first of all, I wouldn't waste my time on chicks who are your age. Because chicks who are your age have an attitude problem. And they generally want to date guys who are much older than you. Don't you really? find it hard to get these chicks to talk to you? No, not really. All right, so they are talking to you. Yeah. All right. Now, I would not recommend you smoke weed because that's illegal. And it would yeah, be wrong. Yeah. And I don't really think that's a sexual inducer anyways. Well, no, I've smoked pot, and I wouldn't say that, but it would just be wrong to do it because it's illegal. Oh, yes, of course. I, I never recommend that. You understand, I'd never recommend that. Yeah, yeah. But if you were to go someplace and, uh, you know, hang out and sit on a cliff and smoke pot, I'm sure some of them would not object. I agree. It's a good point. It's a good point. And even if it's not sexual for you, and by the way, I don't recommend this because it's illegal and I couldn't be recommending it. But uh, I, I, I know there are chicks who do like that. True. Yeah, definitely. So even though I don't recommend it, that doesn't mean there are chicks like that. So your basic advice is uh, avoid uh, any... Uh, avoid, yeah, eating a, of... avoid eating a macaroni grill. <laughs> uh-huh. El Torito. TJ Friday. Uh, right. Avoid eating. Avoid the eating thing. Uh-huh. And avoid uh, coffee shops. and. Uh, oh, coffee shops are out. No Starbucks. Starbucks yeah. out. Coffee shops out. Denny's no. out. IHOP, the most asexual place on earth, out. <laughs> yeah, just be down in there with a bunch of grandma and grandpas, huh? You want to avoid that. And you want to avoid movies and concerts. Right, okay, good point, yeah. You know. See, not, that's what I'm trying to get at, but, yeah. The, I, I mean, the trick I get that is point, because I've been listening. The, the best way to go is to find some place where people hang out. You know, like here in L.A., you got Westwood or you got Venice. You know, if you can't go to a bar and drink, uh -huh. take them someplace that's cool to hang out, like the beach at Venice or uh, Huntington Beach or somewhere like that. Uh, that's a good idea. In your case, you're, you're calling from Long Beach. Downtown Long Beach has been a good place to go for a long time. True, true. And uh, just do some walking. 
Okay, yeah, I wasn't sure if the walking was uh, in the ranges of 101, but no, that sounds like a great idea. It's absolutely free, costs you nothing, keeps you doing illegal bad. things like drinking under 21 or smoking pot, which would be absolutely wrong. Of course, you would never do those things anyway. Uh, I've never done them. I okay, don't. good, good. Keep I, it up. I never would, huh? Keep doing, keep doing what's legal. Yeah, you know, I'm trying to be the best citizen I can be. That's good. <laughs> and I'm sure all the women you date are all the best citizens they could be, too. Oh, of course. Yes. They live in Long Beach. Yes. Well, Tom, dude, you're the best, man. Thanks. You really helped out. I appreciate it. Diego, thank you for the call. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. It's our telephone number. Let's say hello to Marcelo on the Tom Likas Show, Likas 101 with your professor. Hello. Como estas, Tomaso? I'm <laughs> doing great, Marcelo. How about you? I'm wonderful, Dad. Uh, I got a question. I got two girls for Saturday night. One's her birthday. The other one is just a girl that I've been dating for about about three weeks now. And I'm kind of confused. I don't know which one I want to go with. Or maybe go with both, you know? Well, I've double shifted many times. I, I like double shifting. Yeah. And not only because of what you can get on a double shift, but also because the double shifting forces you to not do the romantic dating thing of staying overnight or having brunch the next day or anything right. like crap. I call, that, I call that my excuse for speed dating. Have right. like three dates in one night. There you go. You know? That's right. Yeah. So you figure out if you're wasting time with each one and then move on to the next. Exactly. But I want to I wanna try and make it so I can see both. Because one, it's her birthday. One, uh, let me tell you about both of them really quick. One is Colombian and black. Beautiful girl. Mm. Tall and skinny. Gorgeous. Probably about an, an LA8. Really? Okay? okay. And then the other one, her name's, her name's uh, I won't mention her name. I'll just uh, leave it. She's a white girl, but she's really down to earth. I like her mentality. And she and they're both big drinkers, number one. They both love to drink. They're both young. And, I, I you know, I'm just kind of like, I love this dilemma. You know what I mean? Who, so which one? Both. Which one is it? Which one's birthday is it? Uh, the black and Colombian girl. And is she uh, having a birthday party, or is anyone doing yeah, anything for yeah, her birthday? Yeah, she's having a birthday party. Right, right. And so, is she inviting you to her birthday party? Yeah, she already did. Oh. So I don't even have to. All I have to do, I, if I, the only money I spend, if anything, is just buy a twelve pack on the way there. That's it. Right, know? but there's also no if it's a party. And I've right. been to Colombian parties myself. Right. There's no guarantee you're getting any alone time with the birthday girl. Right. Well, I've already been with her, so it. Ah. <laughs> so you're you know, just so, so you're just putting in an appearance. Yeah, pretty much. And then this way, you've got a perfect excuse to leave. Yeah. Date number two. Okay. There you go. And do there not bring. Do not. Obviously, I, I, I'm sure you won't. But do not bring date number two to the birthday party of date number one. That's the. Well, see. Well, see. This is where another dilemma I like happens because they're also both bisexual. Right. So, but they're not going to be bisexual on girl number one's birthday. Right. With all those people around. That's true. That's true. So the trick is you do number one, and then you move over to number two somewhere else. Got it. Got it. Got it. I think I have it figured out then. Very good. All right. Thanks a lot, Dad. Thank you, Marcelo. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. Renee on the Tom Likas Show. It's Likas 101. Hello. Hi, Tom. How you doing? Great. Long-time listener. Thank um, you. I have a question for you. Yes. I, I'm 23. I'm, uh, I work in the fashion industry. And my question is, I have types of events that I have to go to with my boss and her husband and other people that work with me and their spouse. I am no place in my life right now ready for a boyfriend. I don't want a boyfriend. How I And I need to find someone who looks the part, acts the part, stands by my side when I need him there, and then he can go off and do his thing, sleep with whoever he wants. Now, my question is, how do I not send the wrong message that he's my boyfriend or make him uncomfortable? Well, well, well you're, you're thinking about this all wrong. First of all, um, what's the incentive for the guy to do that? What do you mean? What I mean is, uh, look, unless you've got a gay friend who will do that for you, uh, why would a straight guy want to go to your work party if he's not going to be rewarded with sex at the end of the evening? Well, because I work in the fashion industry and there's gorgeous-looking girls everywhere. and it doesn't mean he's going to get any of them, especially right. if he arrives with you. Right. You see, what you need to do is you either need to get a gay friend, who the gay friends are great for that, and they love the fashion industry, 
Or what you need to do is you need to develop what I call the bullpen. Okay. You need to have a a stable of guys. You know, no guy, I'm sorry, and no girl for that matter, is one stop shopping. Okay. Okay. You know, you got some guys who are great in the sack, but they're complete jerks in public. Right. You got some guys who are great at your job, but in bed they fumble or they they don't know what to do or they're. You know, you need to have guys who are specialists, the way baseball teams have specialists uh, in the bullpen. Relief pitchers who come in, one's a starting pitcher, one is a middle relief pitcher, one's the closer. Okay. You need to have guys who fulfill these functions. So these are like friends with benefits, three, four, five of them, whatever, however many you can handle. Okay. And you see them when you need them. So you call one guy into the bullpen and you say, I have a work event this Saturday. Mm-hmm. I need you to come with me, and then after that, you know, if we have some time later on in the evening, we'll go for it. But how do I not scare the guy away with that? They tend to freak Don't out. Don't worry about it. Every guy doesn't freak out. About it. I'll tell you what, I'll be your guy. I have, a, I have a jacket and tie. I'll go with you, but you better be great in the sack. Oh, of course. Hello. I'm a Jewish girl from L.A. You know, we are known for being that way. At, at least till you get married, and then you know what happens. Uh Oh, poor thing. That's the word on the street, dear. Oh, really? Okay. And then I yes. have one other question. I, <laughs> um, my father put me on a dating website. It's actually J Date, Jewish Dating Online. Uh, yeah, well, I knew it would have to be J Date, yes. Okay. And, um, my question is is that a smart thing to do or a bad thing to do? Are you to looking do? to get married or get laid? Um, definitely not married. Do you know um, what kind of people are on J-Date? What? Desperate people. Okay. Really? People whose that's... parents said, you need to be on J-Date. Like, come on. I mean, do you really care if the people you're, you're the people who are boffing you are Jewish? Does it really matter? Um, this day and age, at the point of my life I'm in, yeah, because they understand when I have to be with my family and when I can be with them. Come on, Latinos understand that, too. I know. That's why Latinos love me, because I got the figure. A- and you got the family thing, though. Yes. You know. Okay. Okay, so it comes off desperate. That's yes. Okay. Yes. Did you, by the way, look this up on the Internet. I can't remember the guy's name now. There was a guy about two summers ago huh. who had, uh, he met a girl on J-Date, and they went uh, to a Chinese restaurant in New York. Okay. And he said to, uh, he said to her at the end of the lunch, uh, he insisted on paying. She wanted to pay half. Okay. And he insisted on paying. He said, I'll tell you what, I'll pay this time, you pay next time. And she said, uh, okay. So he paid, and then when he called her for the next date, she never answered the phone. <laughs> so he proceeded to call her and leave her, and these are on the Internet. Okay. She posted them. Uh-huh. The most pathetic series of voicemails, one after another after another. This, this guy was sitting, figuring out to the penny how much she owed him for the lunch. Oh, Where, my God. I mean, this is what you meet on J-Date, darling. I gotcha. I gotcha. So I should just live my life, and when Prince Charming decides to come along, then it's Darling, along. J-Date is for when, you know, when you turn 28, and your parents are saying, when am I going to get grandchildren? And now you need to pick a doctor, a the lawyer. Doc- very true, very true. So you go to J-Date then, when you absolutely, positively have to have a Jew overnight. And we'll go to the corner and get some coffee in Brooklyn, right? Right, exa- exactly yeah. right. But now, you don't need that now. No, I don't. No, you're right. You're right. I'm just living my life. I'm single female. I like to have fun, but I there are priorities. Be like the Persian guys named Tony, who pretend to be Italian, and they date anybody and everybody. But when they get married, they're going to marry an Iranian. You can never deal with Persian. They're never going to marry you. <laughs> no, but I'm saying be like one of them, see? They get it down. They know that the Persian girls aren't giving it up for them because the Persian girls are supposed to be virgins. Yeah, right. So they uh-huh. date everybody else. And, and the Persian guys, they, we've talked about this before. The Persian guys all call themselves Sal, Tony, and Nick. These are not their real names. And the women meet them in places like Beverly Hills and Malibu, and they say, oh, I met this great Italian guy. Uh, it's a funny name. It doesn't sound Italian, you know, but uh, he's a great guy. And what happens is the family will never sign off on you if you're not Persian. Very true. So these guys are banging everything that moves, but when it comes time to get married, that's when they look for a Persian girl. So that's what you do. 
Yeah, that's what you need to do. You, right that's now, you're just looking to get laid. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Later on, when your father wants Jewish grandchildren, then you go down, then you go to J date. Um, J date is not for getting laid. J date is for meeting a doctor. Doctor, even though there are guys these days that are in their 20, early twenties on J date, and they just want to have sex. But they, their, their parents, their mother put them on J date. Mm -hmm. Okay. Their mother probably answers their email. You're right. Yeah, that make, that would make sense. My grandfather was a Jew. I grew up in a 99% Jewish neighborhood uh, before it became a 99% black neighborhood when I was a kid. Uh -huh. And I'm telling you, this is how it works. Hey, you, you give great advice, Tom. Thank you. All right. Thank you, darling. Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. A Tom Likas show. Tom like his show. one 800 800 tom That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We appreciate it. Like us 101. I am your professor. It's Kevin on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Tom, how you doing? Long time, first time, buddy. Doing great. Good, good. Now listen, Tom, I've been practicing your 101 for a long time, and I can tell you it's probably one of the best college courses I've ever taken, man. It really works. Excellent. So, the only thing is that for some reason, now I'm, I'm kind of getting a little bit, uh, I'm, I'm kind of turning into a slacker, Tom. I mean, I don't know how to tell you this, but I, I met a girl, you know, she, she's my age, and, uh, you know, I met her at a strip club. And uh, honestly, I mean, now we're, we're starting to get a little bit serious and stuff. And Wait a minute, you, know, you met her at a strip club? She's a stripper? Yeah, Tom, she is. Oh, that, come on, pal, please. She, you know what? If you want to have sex with a stripper, fine. But but why would you be having a relationship with a stripper? You know what? Once I got to know her, you know, it, 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 you know she seems like she has some kind of, of, of depth in her personality. You know, she's not just like the, the dumb bimbo that gets oh, on no. a pole, but... I, no, the, the strippers are not dumb. No, uh, but they, not. But, they, but uh, you know what? They're grinding away on other guys all day and all night long. Why would you want to be with somebody like that? You know what? I ask myself the same question, and I'm calling, Tom, because I really don't know. I mean, I really don't know what to do at this point. I mean, I don't know if I should leave or stay with her, you know, or even if I decide to leave her. I mean, how, how do I, you know? Yeah, well, you shouldn't be staying. Let's start with what? this. You shouldn't be staying with anybody. You shouldn't be living with anybody. You shouldn't be involved with anybody. You shouldn't be marrying anybody. Right, right. Well, see, I already made that mistake once. I am divorced. I have a, I have, you know, I had a child with my, with my. Wait first a minute, wife, and you're and 24 years old, and now you're going to do the same thing again? Yeah, that, that's where I'm kind of getting scared, man. Where I, I mean, I really don't even know what to tell this girl to tell you. You know what? How I, about I no? Good idea. How about no? It's just a no. Just no. Right? No. I mean, why can't you just have sex with her? I don't know, man. Honestly, it, 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 it's complicated. You can't know, turn a whore. You cannot turn a whore. You cannot turn a whore into a housewife. You can't. Right. Right, right. And, no, I, I hear you on that one. I and she's a one. single mother. Why should you end up, which you will, having to pay for some other man's mistake? That is true, Tom. That is true. So you know, why do it? Once again, you opened up my eyes. You know, hopefully, I mean, I'm, I'm honestly, I mean, I think it's over, man. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't really see how this could really be a good relationship at all. So, well, then get I'm, out. Yeah, I think you're right. All right. All right. Can you take me out, Kobe style, Tom? Yes, Kevin, I can. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. It's like it's one oh one. Let's say hello here to uh, <laughs> Marty on the Tom Likas show. Hey Tom, how's it going? Great. Well, I'm 31 years old. Uh, I broke up with my girlfriend about six months ago. 
she uh, hated you. Uh, That's always the clue right there. <laughs> uh, we had a lot of problems, but the fact that I, I she she been demanded that I stop listening to you and I wouldn't do it was pretty much uh, you know the the last straw. I mean, I, I just I don't know. So you know, six months later, I'm I'm starting to to question. Uh, whether that was really a good idea or not. I mean, yeah, it was a bad relationship I was in, but I guess what I'm getting at is, is sex really that great that it, it it's more important than love and, uh, like, connecting with someone? You know and, what's more important than love? Being in love with somebody who doesn't tell you what to do. Definitely, definitely. But, I mean, I, mean, I guess, like, I've been always about, like, it's 101. I mean, it sounds great, like... Logically, uh, in theory, it sounds great, but like if I meet a beautiful woman and she's smart, she's amazing, uh, we connect on every level, um, great in bed and everything, am I really supposed to like pump her and dump her like you say to? I mean, why would I want to let her go? Like, why? Would... Uh, well, again, uh, this is a class for people who want to get laid. That's what this right. is. Uh, but you must remember, love costs. Can you afford it? Um, I mean, I make pretty good money. No, but I mean, and, <laughs> but what, well, the point is, why should you pay to be in love? Well, I mean, financially or emotionally? Well, <laughs> we'll get to emotionally in a second. You're okay. going to have to pay money. It's going to cost you. Yes. Is yes. it worth paying? I don't know. I what mean, do you mean you don't know? Well, there's there's some great things in life. I mean, like you know, waking up yeah, but, but, next but, to a beautiful woman. But and, but it's prostitution. You have to pay for that. <laughs> You're laughing. Oh, that's what I, it is. I, well, I, I don't see where the money comes into it. I, I'm yeah, thinking, you know, don't. You don't think you're going to be paying for anything and everything? Yeah, I. I that's where the money I, I comes in. Well, something. that's where the money comes in. Right. I guess my question is, like, what, I, what I'm thinking is what I'm really paying for or what I'm really giving up is like it's 101. No, you're giving up more than that. You're going to pay to have a woman say, I love you. Is she really doing that because I'm paying her or because... Try doing it without paying her. Try saying, honey, I love spending time with you, but I don't want you living in my apartment. <laughs> yeah, that was my relationship before my last one. Ah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I mean, you already know this stuff, and now yes. you're playing dumb here. Well, I mean, I'm reaching a point where, like, uh, I don't know. You reach the point where you want to start paying a woman to say I love you. No, I guess I, I just it feels a little empty to just meet a woman. No, but it doesn't. Pay, it doesn't feel empty to, to know that a woman is only with you if you agree to pay for everything, and then if things don't work out, to pay her to leave. Yes. You, you, otherwise, it feels empty. Yeah, I see your point. So am I just being a pussy then? Yes. Oh. By the way, you, yeah. you, you want to settle down? Don't you have a place to live? I, I do have a place to Got live. Got a good job? Yes, very good. Good job. friends? Yes. You are yes. settled down. So, so is that good or bad? It's great. But the point is, you don't have to pay a woman to come live in your beautiful life. Right. Right. Thank you. I, that's what I needed to hear. That's the truth, pal. Tom. 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 Like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show, coming to you from Hollywood. It's Likas 101. I am your professor at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's one 800 Jacob on Likas 101. Hello. Tom, um, what's going on? Not much. Hey, bro, I DTB. <laughs> Do tell. Tell us the story. Oh, I've been, was lit, I let my girlfriend move in with me, and... Uh... 
like like a dumbass, and um, you know things were going good for a while, and then all of a sudden she stopped taking care of herself, and uh, you know what happens then? They just gain a bunch of weight, and finally I just tell her, I tell her, hey, I need some time, I need some space, we need to relook at this thing, and uh, she moved out, and been happy since. And you're not gonna let anyone else move in now, are you? No, she's she's all she tells me, oh, I've lost this much weight, I've lost that much weight now, I'm working out, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. Like, good, I'm proud of you. I'm glad to hear that. Right. Now get yourself an apartment. <laughs> she, <laughs> exactly. Amazing. And uh, so where is she living now? At her mom. Perfect. So. Sounds good to me, Jacob. Congratulations. Josh on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, what's up? Not much. Well, uh, my buddy said that I could call you and you'd give me some pretty good advice. Probably so. All right, well, this is the story. I'm 18 years old. I have a girlfriend. And why, why do you have a girlfriend? Huh? Why do you have a girlfriend? Yeah, I don't even know. You're I'm 18 just, years old. I know. I have you, a girlfriend. You don't need a girlfriend. Yeah, you're right about that, but this, this is what happened. I was sleeping with some of her friends, and my girlfriend Another had reason. Another reason you don't need a girlfriend. Yep. So you have a girlfriend, and you're sleeping with her friends, and then what happened? My girlfriend already has a kid. How old is she? She's 18. Are you calling from a trailer park? Uh, where are you calling from? White Trash Heaven? Where are you? <laughs> Colton. Same difference. <laughs> Isn't that so? Yeah, it is. Well, anyways, my girlfriend has a kid. All, and now... all I need to hear about is the crystal meth part. No, no crystal meth for me. How about in the neighborhood? Oh, a grip. I'm sure the rest of the trailer park is uh, in on it. <laughs> yeah, the whole trailer park is. Yeah. So now one of my girlfriend's friends is trying to say that she's pregnant. Me and my girlfriend were living together, and I just lost my job, and my girlfriend just kicked me out of the house, and she doesn't work, and I really don't know what to do right now. Why are you living with her? Um... Basically for the baby. For whose baby? For our baby. Has she had the baby? Yeah. Okay. I thought but she had a baby. Her... I thought you told me your girlfriend had a baby from somebody else. No. My girlfriend has my baby, and now her friend is trying to say that she's pregnant. By you? Yeah. Okay. Have you ever heard of a condom? Yeah, I use them all the time. Then how did this happen? I have no clue. Do you think I probably got screwed by that 1%? Uh, yeah, and by the way, what kind of birth control was she using? I, I have no clue. Do you know why girls don't use birth control? Why is that? Say it with me. Because she wants to have a baby. Because she wants to have a baby. Right. Don't you ever ask these chicks if they are using birth control? Yeah, I've asked one of them, but I really didn't think about asking the rest of them. Uh huh. How many of them are using birth control that you know of? Uh, the pill. What do you mean hard to tell? Don't you have the conversation? How about Not the one? Really, you, how no. about the one you had the conversation with? Huh? Oh, Jesus, you had a conversation with one of them, right? Yeah. What did she say? She says that she takes the pill. Uh -huh. But that's not the one that got pregnant. Right. Now, why do you have a girlfriend if you need to sleep with all her friends? she got some hot friends. Why do you need to be her girl, uh, her boyfriend? I don't get it. <clears throat> I'm, I'm just with her because we have a kid together and trying to keep the family close. Right. This is quite a family you have, and that's why you're banging everybody else in town. You're such a family guy. You know it. Right. And uh, let me guess, no college for you, right, son? No, I'm actually uh, going into the Army. When are you going? Uh, in a week. Great. That's good. So what is your question? Um, I'm really just... Wondering what you think I should do. What do you what I think you should do? Stop having babies. Stop having a girlfriend. 
you, you, you need a list? So basically you're saying to stop having sex? Stop having babies. How do you expect that if I was wearing condoms? Uh, you have a conversation. Here's what an adult male does. You have a conversation. Are you on birth control? What kind of birth control are you on? How long have you been on it? If you're a real man, you can ask these questions without fear. But you're not. Well, it's not that I, I wasn't scared to ask them. I just didn't think about it. What do you mean you didn't think about it? You have to pay for these kids. I know. So why don't you think about it? Um, it just slipped my mind. Yeah, well, God, is it going to slip your mind when you have to make 18 years of payments to some bitch for 30 seconds of ejaculation? Yeah, you got a point there. 18 years. Yep. You did it. I sure did. Good luck. Carlos on Lycus 101. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Carlos. How you doing, Tom? I'm doing great. Hey, I just wanted to tell you, I want to share my story, man. I was, uh, I'm, uh, I'm from L.A., man. I was seeing this one, one girl, man, for, for years now, man. And, you know, she's always wanted to snatch me up, man, and... And I, you know, you know, I always use use the rubbers, man. But, but sometimes I didn't. I thought I was smarter than you, Tom. And uh, sure enough, man, she got knocked up, dude. And uh, you know, I, I I use I I remember, you know, hearing your show, and I used the old Hail Mary on her, man. I told her that I wasn't ready for a kid, and this and that, and and told her that I loved her and stuff, and that you know, soon enough we, we would we would get together, man, and. And she went through with the, with with the abortion, and right after, man, I DT beat her ass, man. <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear that, Carlos. Hey, I just want to say, I just want to say to all your listeners, Tom, this man, he knows what he's talking about. Listen to him; he's great. Like us, man. Like us, 101, baby. That's what I live by. Now I'm getting more ass than the toilet seat. I am so proud of you, Carlos. Thanks for the call. The Tom Likas Show.